Uh, hi, hello. So basically, what I would like to talk here is three things, uh, uh, long live transactions and the scalability and performance. We will see why this is then crucial when we are talking about the provisioning uh, and orchestration of the, of the um, virtual infrastructure. So basically, if you look what will happen when we have the network transaction uh, with the netconf, we will produce the device configuration change. The first stage is that we should check all the devices if they are reachable. If they are not, the transaction will fail. So then we will start to work with the candidate database. Uh, we will apply the changes then into the running configuration. And only when I will get the confirmation from all the devices that they successfully applied the device configuration change, uh, the transaction will be successful. So obviously that in that time we will lock all the devices to which we are pushing the device configuration change. Uh, we'll see that this could be also the problem when we are talking about, about the virtual infrastructure. If you're looking here, basically by the eight Simano, we have the NAV orchestrator, the NAV manager, and also then in the, in the, in the uh, lower layer, we have virtual infrastructure manager. Uh, so the role of the orchestrator here is basically that we have the service catalog in it. Uh, obviously, we will produce uh, the device configuration changes. And uh, in some stage, when we are bringing up the virtual infrastructure, we need to send a request for virtual infrastructure. So the request will be sent it down to the manager. So the role of the manager here it is that uh, should support the life cycle of the virtual machines, like onboarding the, the, the images, uh, the flavors, uh, deploying, undeploying, uh, monitoring the, the, the virtual instances uh, to monitor the, the, the KPIs, I don't know, like CPU utilization, memory consumption. Um, if we have the case that the manager is integrated with API of the virtual infrastructure managers, let's say that we have the case of the open stack or VMware, uh, it doesn't matter. In this approach, then we can get the agentless monitoring. So because from the, VM, from the Vim side, we will get uh, the KPIs regarding the, the, the memory consumption, CPU utilization. Uh, and then when we are finished with the, with the deploying of the virtual device, we will create, uh, uh, then we will configure the, the uh, virtual appliances there. So the thing here is that uh, one of the things which the manager should take care of is also uh, the day zero configuration. So by basically what means day zero configuration, I will get the configuration so the management interfaces will be up. Uh, it means that then device, the virtual device is reachable from the, from the orchestrator. And usually when we are working with commercial appliances, you need to apply also some kind of the license here. Uh, so the thing here is, as we can see, that it takes time. If we go back to the netconf, it means that whatever devices, because usually the service could be also something outside of virtual uh, infrastructure, we will see that for that period of time, we will lock all the devices for the configuration changes. So the thing here is that if we don't know how much time we will need it in the case that we are provisioning the virtual, uh, uh, the virtual infrastructure, um, we will see that it could depend regarding on the low, uh, load on the, on, the, on, on the rim, how much time we need that we will get the virtual uh, instances up and running. So the answer here will be the multi-stage multi transaction. Here are some examples uh, when we are talking about the uh, multi-stage transaction. So it's not just the, that we are bringing up the, the virtual infrastructure. Uh, it's also the case when we are acquiring the external resources. And if we go back to the netconf, the idea here is that we should leave the transaction as soon as possible. Obviously, that I'm talking uh, uh, about the example here, which is based on the, on the commercial product. But, but anyway, you will see the same cases if you start to work with the, with the provisioning uh, of the virtual infrastructures or if you're requiring the, the, uh, the external data. So the main two things here are the service model and the device model. So the device model defines us the data structure which is on the device. So basically what we need to provision as a device configuration change. In the service model, we have the definition of the service. So general rule here is 
the service, basically the service model also is doing the abstraction toward the vendors and the devices. So don't put nothing in the service model which uh, uh, is tied to per device per vendor case. So we should be able to produce from the, from the service model uh, the device configuration changes for, for whatever uh, devices or vendors we are, we are using in the environment. So the idea here is that we will break down the transaction in two pieces. The first one will just create the service instance. Then we will check if we have the resources. Uh, if we don't have the resources, let's say that we are talking about the virtual infrastructure, we will send the request for submission of the resources. So obviously we have some kind of package here which will be triggered. The package will send the request down to the VNF manager and when the virtual appliances are up and running, uh, we will then obviously sync the devices into the, into, the, into the database and we will redeploy the same service again. Um, maybe one thing here. Uh, if you are using the, 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 the netconf just in the case that we will just configure the devices is one thing. If you would like to provision the services, then we also need to know it doesn't matter if this is the virtual infrastructure or we are just deploying, a, let's say, layer 3 VPN. The thing here is that you need to take track of all the instances which are relying on the same configuration. So if, if you are not, not tracking that, uh, you will end up that if you delete some instance of the service, also the other instances will be affected and, and they will not work. So basically, just briefly, the idea here is that we have the service manager, the device manager. Uh, obviously, we will do uh, the abstraction uh, toward the external systems uh, through the service model and then device model will produce, uh, will produce the device configuration change. Uh, if you are looking on the Napalm has the pretty much same uh, 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 same architecture, you will there have the network drivers. Uh, here are called the network element drivers. So one role of the network element driver is also to simulate the CLI devices, which are not capable uh, to to run the uh, the netconf. So I will just briefly go through the process. Here we have two pa uh, two packages, VM manager and uh, VM manager, uh, VNFM. Uh, so the idea is why two, 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 uh, two packages. This is then the case that we can achieve asymmetric transactions. Uh, if you have the the uh, the big load uh, on the on the VM on the on the VM side. So I will get a request to create the service. In this stage, I will also check if I have the resources. So basically, if the virtual devices are available for the configuration. In the case when we are creating the first in, uh, the, the, the instance of the service, we obviously don't have the, uh, the, uh, the virtual infrastructure in place. Uh, so we will put through the subscriber application the request uh, towards the uh, VNF manager. Uh, VNF manager will deploy the devices when the devices are up and running and the service is alive. Uh, then the VM manager VNF will add the devices into the, into, into the system and redeploy that instance of the service. So obviously then when we are redeploying the same service again, we have the, device, uh, we have the reachable devices there because they're already in the, in, the, in the database and this is then the way that we can, uh, that we can deploy uh, the service until the end. So the thing here is if we will not do that in two stages, we will lock all the devices which are the park, bar, part of the configuration because you need to know that you need to also to provision the, I don't know, different infrastructure there, the external physical devices if we are deploying uh, the service. Uh, so at that time we are not able to do nothing on that devices. So therefore we did it in two stages. Uh, here are also some examples that if you would like to move the virtual machine from one data center, data center to the another data center is the pretty much the same case. If we are doing uh, the integration with external services like inventories and things like that, we will end up pretty much in the same situation that we don't know how much time takes that we will get back the, the data which, which we need to, to, to successfully uh, deploy the service. Uh, one thing about the scalability here is in the case that we are talking uh, about, let's say, one server 
what we can do, we can increase the resources like CPU memory. Uh, we can optimize some code there, uh, change some behavior uh, which we have, but in the end we will face the limit. Uh, here are just the two. Three cases how we can solve that. So if we are talking from the standpoint of the orchestrations, the first one is not very smart approach because we will produce the silos. So let's say that one server is uh, responsible for the configuration of the VPN services, the other is responsible for the virtual infrastructure. In the case of the clustering, uh, we will see that we have the service model on top and we will produce the device configuration changes on the top model. Uh, in the layer service approach, uh, we are working here with customer facing services and resource facing services. So this is all, uh, again, also something which is defined by the, by the Etsimano. The idea here is that you have the service model which is exposed through the Nordwand interface to the, to the uh, OSS BSS site. And then you have the resource facing services uh, uh, which will then create, let's say, it, uh, I don't know, virtual router, virtual firewall, and basically they are in the second layer. So if we just briefly look into, 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 into the cluster solution, the problem is the device configuration changes will be produced in the, in the, in the top node, basically in the service node. And we will have the problem with the utilization of the links there. Um, if we go back into the, into the service layer approach, is the thing that uh, the device configuration changes will be produced then, uh, then in, the, in, the, in the device node. Uh, so it means that we can run this transaction in parallel from the, from the top node or however we will call it. Um, there are some rules if you go into the that approach. It doesn't mean that you need to, to use this product, but it is in general uh, most crucial design your service model in the way that it's two layer. Uh, usually what you will do, the integration with the external systems you will do on the top node. Um, this is briefly what I had. <laughs>